Uh, 629 the new super review is brought to you by fidelity bank together let's share the joy of this festive season use the fidelity mobile amp to perform your banking transactions yeah. and you could win 500 ghana cds gift vouchers each week yeah. we're one of top five customers to do this fidelity bank believe with us we're also sponsored by quartz from total our 9000 future zero w20 is specially conditioned and developed for the latest generation engine it delivers excellent engine protection and cleanliness, increases your oil change interval, and reduces your fuel consumption. Join the Total Quartz Nation movement now. 0549986996. What a morning. What a weekend. Lots to do. So, I, 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 I this weekend, when I was watching the spelling bee from Kumasi, I thanked God that I wasn't born after 2010 but i was <laughs> that i was born in 81 because i used to do spelling b you know in our school they used to do spelling bees on fridays and the words were pretty straightforward yeah there was nothing like can i have the word in a sentence can i have the root word can yeah I, 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 I i i share your sentiment I mean, it was just spell something then you just spell it because i participated in the national spelling bee back then this is how many years ago <laughs> a long time ago and they didn't <laughs> do those things no i remember the winning word that year was sinewy oh yes <laughs> sinewy nobody would throw you so have this sign you <laughs> so something which is like a sign you yes so like, like uh, um, yeah because this year lord well if you didn't follow the spelling b on city tv you've missed a lot if you needed evidence that education and what kids are supposed to know today it's two thousand times higher than what we knew that's what the spelling be <laughs> it was serious yeah it was serious it was, it was great and of course this story on um airbus is a local story it's really a huge you need to understand the way airbus and um, boeing compete and you need to understand the strength of western regulators and government when it comes to corporate corruption <laughs> And you need to understand mm. the details they put out and the <laughs> Bernard, repeat the thing just yeah the strength of western countries i mean for example facebook pays more in fines than it does in taxes in many western countries mm. of course a lot of companies go ahead of governments in their innovative ways of making money but governments always catch up mm. that's a serious government always catch up you said something about institutions yes so i mean look we'll come in there again so big story Airbus bribed Ghanaian officials. This is uh, coming in from two sources. One is the British Serious Fraud Office. The other is an American uh, court document. And it's all over the social media. We'll bring you the, the four, is it a 411 on all of that yeah. as well. And, and, and the other one is um, the Coffee Bee story. Yeah, yeah we're, we're playing a song because, <coughs> was it Sunday morning? Yes, yeah, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Um, if you look at the highlight space, um, over the past few years, you've lost some of the greatest names. And we expected the likes of Kofi B um, to keep the, the Vim going because he's younger, he does authentic high life, and, 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 and he's unique in everything that he does. But the sad news we got yesterday was mm. that he had also passed on. And and for me, it's, it's you know what, the what's biggest sad ab- losses for What's Ghana. sad about this? So Sunday, last Sunday was Kobe Bryant. Yeah. And then this Sunday is Kofi B. It's just uh, crazy, crazy how this happens. Yeah. He was a Mogo. Yeah, he was at yeah. Mogo. He was, he was at Mogo last year. Yeah, you know. he wasn't moving too aggressively, but I was told that's the, his style. But the, but his music, music moved moves. us. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, the it thing. Did, it did. His it music did. moved us. It and did. for me, he's he's a gentleman's gentleman. If you yeah. if you talk to Kofi B or you do business with him or you deal with him, you know that mm. he's a he's a very unique. So person. for those who don't know Kofi B, he's more like, um, and Ponsa light. Yeah, yes, I wouldn't say light. Yeah, Kofi B in his own light. Okay, 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 let me let me let me let me rephrase. Yeah, that this generation. in that genre, that yeah. that that type of yeah. So yeah. Ophorian Ponsa, Kofi B, Kofi T. Yeah. So Ophorian Ponsa, we can say got his anointing from Lumba, and then Kofi B got his thing from Kofi Ophorian Ponsa. Ponsa. Yeah. Yes. So that's how you describe yeah. it. So he's died. Anyway, so let's start with the headlines from you, Godfrey. Yes, I'll start from the business pages, Bernard. Front page of the Business and Financial Times. Only 8% of funds recovered from collapsed banks, <laughs> according to Philip Addison, governor of the Bank of Ghana. Hmm. Stop Unipass takeover of ports. Sorry, is it Philip Addison? No, it's not Philip. No, doctor. <laughs> Ernest. Ernest, 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 yes. Philip, Philip is his brother. <laughs> Philip, <laughs> is the, Philip is the, the <laughs> lawyer. To you. This is the yeah, economist. Yeah, Kofi, so, Kofi Dr. B. Ernest Addison. Just mm. to be clear. Yes, Charlie. Yeah. BOG boss. Mm. Stop Unipass takeover of ports. Imani to government. 
helping pineapple farmers access the EU market is a feature that is here. And Cocoa bought to rehabilitate 37,000 hectares of unproductive cocoa farms. Now, the Ghanaian Times, 10,000 employees on payroll illegally. Auditor General vows to remove them if 5 tunnel chrome Methodist church members die in road crash. President Ashanti Region Christian Council raised funds for National Cathedral. Halt Unipass takeover of ports. Imani urges government. President begins Savannah Upper West Region's tour today. And a very good story on page 15 of the Times. Borgat Municipal Assembly digitizes property rate collection. Hmm. Let me take you to the wow. graphic. And this time I'm doing graphic online because the actual paper is not here. So I'm taking mm-hmm. uh, headlines from there. Mm-hmm. This go with high life musician Kofi B mm-hmm. passes on. Five dead, 14 in critical condition in gory accident near Apam. <laughs> Airbus confesses paying bribes to Ghana during Mills Mahama era. Hmm. And then there's a Mahama story here. Come clean on economic data. Former President Mahama challenges government. Now, the big story on the front page of the finder, over 5 million euros, uh, over 5 million euro Airbus bribe, which elected government official and brother were involved. That's the question they are asking. Political parties to receive final electronic voters register in mid-October. This is according to the EC. Mm. Shelve Unipass and demand proven value above existing systems. Imani to government. And Mota High Commissioner promises to support Nanado's entrepreneurship agenda. Front page of the Daily Guide paper also goes with the Airbus bribe scandal. Comes with a photo of John Mahama. Don't know why. NDC hopes dust over new register is here. High Life Star Kofi be dead. Peace Council under NPP control, says John Mahama. Now, the Chronicle, NPP unaware of any presidential debate. This is John Bodu. Mahama must speak to this 5 million scum. A book concert writes in the paper, no payment was authorized at NCA without due procedures. This is William Tevier speaking. Arrest Ghana Railway Company officials who okay test run of Takrade Takrat Rail Line. This is the leader of uh, GUM, Osofo Chirabosom. And Airbus paid NDC Big Works $5 million bribe, UK court told. Let me add one more headline from the Daily Graphic proper, Bernard. New register ready by November. This is from the EC. It comes with the photo of Mrs. Jean Mensah. We've gone past turbulence, CBG. Also on the front page of that paper. Mm. And then let me add the front page of the Independent who also reports the Airbus bribery. Former Attorney General rebuffs reports. Mm. Let's make TVET attractive right from childhood. Now, Franklin Kujo says that the Airbus scandal will adversely affect Mohammed's 2020 chances. This is on the front page of the Ghanaian Observer. Mm-hmm. The Kufado tours Savannah Upper West regions. NLA empowers farmer with 126,000 Ghana cities. Front page of the Daily Statesman, Mahama in biggest corruption scandal. NLA empires farmer with 126,000 Ghana cities. And the president's tour of the Savannah and Upper West regions also makes the front page of the paper. The new crusading guide, Ghana named in explosive bribery scandal as Airbus confesses paying bribes to facilitate business. Imani speaks on trade at port, revenue flows. Front page of the new publisher, Bernard, Minister Creating Problems for Government, mm-hmm. uh, comes with a photo of Alan Chemati, and this is over the Unipass matter. Carlos Ahinkra Alster pops up in Tema West MPP Prime. It looks like somebody is challenging him there. And uh, today, NPP confirms romance with ND, uh, with EC. Sorry, NPP confirms romance with EC. Ghana Commercial Bank, GCB Bank Limited, unveils G Money mobile wallet and NLA empowers Upper East Farmer. Now, if you go to the Economy Times, balance of payment improves significantly, records $1.3 billion surplus. Government mm-hmm. misses deficit targets slightly and Ghana's total desktop reaches 214 billion Ghana cities. City, citynewsroom.com Airbus Barbie scandal Nanado refers case to special prosecutor. Also, Airbus never paid bribes during Mills Mahama government. Uh, this is NDC. And then Airbus scandal will adversely affect Mohammed's 2020 campaign. This is Franklin Kujo. Other stories. Nadia Mashoud wins 2020 spelling bee competition. Yay. New mm-hmm. syllables won't go contrary to Ghana's cultural values, according to NAPO. And coronavirus. Nukes USAC demand evacuation of Ghanaian students from China. And then Akufado begins two-day visit of Savannah, Upper West Regions today. Citybusinessnews.com gets to own 13% of ADB after supporting it with recapitalization. Also, Energy analysts urge government to explore possible ways of reducing cost of Polugu Dam. And Unipass kicks off in February despite freight forwarders resistance. MyJoinOnline.com, Akufado to visit Savannah, Upper West Regions today. 
also he tasked special prosecutor to probe government or officials in airbus bribery scandal and fire got Burma camp battalion market and then of course the ndc denial former government officials were not bribed by airbus former attorney general denies report now we are told that the coronavirus has now their toll in china mm-hmm. exceeds 360 hey. now it means it has exceeded sars and this is coming in from China. South China Morning Post says military expands role as mainland China death toll hits 361, exceeding SARS. So that's a, a big one. And of course, the UK's uh, BBC website, Hong Kong hospital strike over virus border fears. And that's the story leading the way in the BBC as well. All right, so let's start. Let's with, do Airbus. Yes, that's the, the big story. Okay, let's start with Airbus for page 16 of the Daily Graphic. Ghana cited in Airbus bribery scandal, but NDC denies its involvement. It's a story by Emmanuel Abo Hoxson. The National Democratic Congress has dismissed allegations of bribery in the acquisition of three military aircraft by the government of Ghana between 2009 and 2015. Airbus, the European aircraft manufacturer, is alleged to have paid bribes in Ghana when it sold the three military aircraft. The aerospace multinational admitted hiring the brother of a top elected Ghanaian official as his consultant for the pitch to sell the aircraft to the country. Also, Airbus confessed paying the said consultant through a third party when its compliance unit raised red flags about the close relationship between the consultant and the top elected official, who was a key decision maker in the purchase of the aircraft. Now, in a report yesterday, however, the NDC, which was the party in government at the time, said, Our attention has been drawn to media reports about a deferred prosecution agreement entered between Airbus SE and the United Kingdom Serious Fraud Office in respect of the practice of Airbus SE in paying commission to its agents and the use of those commissions. A statement signed by a former Attorney General and Minister of Justice in the immediate past NDC administration, Mrs. Marita Pong said, the reports alleging that Airbus SE paid bribes during the administration of President John Evans Hamilton and John Dramani Mahama are false, misleading, and do not reflect the approved judgment. Well, there are uh, ripples of that story. For example, the president has referred the matter to the special prosecutor. That's on citynewsroom.com. President Kufuadu has referred the Evers bribery scandal story to the office of the special prosecutor to investigate the matter. The investigations are expected to be conducted in collaboration with the UK authorities, according to a statement from the presidency. The statement noted that the special prosecutor's office will collaborate with the UK counterparts to conduct a prompt inquiry to determine the complicity or otherwise of any Ghanaian government official past or present involved in the said scandal. The president, according to the statement, wants necessary legal action taken against any such official as required by Ghanaian law. And we'll, we'll tell you what Ghanaian law says about bribery. But the, the the background to the story is that on January 31, Ghana was cited as one of five countries in which global aerospace group Airbus SE allegedly bribed or promised payments to senior officials in exchange for business favors between 2009 and 2015 according to the uk serious fraud office now we have the documents from both the uk court and also an american uh, court that would point yeah, so out have, the series of events so you have sfo documents so you have doj documents exactly and then there are also relevant laws that will bring to the discussion but then of course in terms of what could happen with this the the main person who's been interviewed on this is franklin kuju who's uh, running Imani. And the story on citynewsroom.com says, the scandal would adversely affect Mohammed's campaign. And then there's a reaction from the NDC's former attorney general. Yes, so I let me give you one. Franklin Kuju and then we'll do that. President of Imani's policy think tank says that uh, as President John Mahama's chances of winning the 2020 elections could be affected after the administration he served in as vice president and later president was cited in the Airbus corruption scandal. And then the background is given. You read Marietta's yes, response I've given as well. You my so response th- that's the, the first major story for the morning. Yeah. Kojo, what's your second story? Let's go to the EC. All right. Political parties to receive final electronic voters register in mid-October. This is according to the EC. Okay. And this story is on page 8 of the finder. Mm. Now, Elvis Darko writes that the Electoral Commission has assured political parties that an electronic version of the final new electoral register will be delivered to them in the middle of October 2020. Per the provisional time of the EC, printing and distribution of the final register is expected to take place between October 10 and November 8, 2020. The EC chairperson, Jane Mensah, told journalists that the commission is committed to abiding by its timetable and programs to deliver free, fair and transparent elections come December 2020. Now, on the same story, uh, the EC met editors, journalists and co. yesterday, Bernard, I think, and the EC showed the media its tentative timetable. Mm -hmm. Now, according to the Daily Graphics report of this, uh, from the media engagement, the EC says that by... November 
the new register will be ready. Now, it's saying that the exhibition of register and adjudication on challenges raised will all end by October 26 this year. So, the process starts in April mm-hmm. yeah. and goes on till October ending. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, the other story has to do with Unipass because they are going to kick off in February, even though Fred Fighters don't agree. City yes. Business News leads with that. It says, by any last minute change, the government will commence the implementation of a new platform for the recording of imports and exports at the country's ports this month. Though widely known as the Unipass system, a Deputy Minister of Finance will quite explain that the eventual rollout will see to the outdooring of a new name for the platform altogether. The new platform is to replace the work currently carried out by the Ghana Community Network Services, GCNet, as well as the Customs World or West Blue Consulting. Proponents of the new system say it has the ability to help the government block revenue shortfalls that have plagued the Customs Division of the GRA for some time. And Imani says that we should shelve Unipass and demand proven value above existing systems. This is in the finder. Now, the story says policy think tank Imani Ghana has asked uh, government to shelve Unipass International Agency of Korea. Uh, services and its local partner Ghana Link Network Services Limited contracted to implement the national single re- window in collaboration with customs. It cautioned that by the nature of its antecedents, the potential of Unipass implementation to severely abrupt, uh, disrupt trade and revenue flows is certain. In a position paper titled Why Government Must Consider Its Decision on the Controversial Unipass, Imani said it took two years for the Ghana Community Network System and West Blue Consulting, the two companies operating the single window, to integrate and work cohesively. And he said the Ghana Integrated Cargo Clearing System and the Ghana Customs Management System on GCNet and the Pre-Arrival Assessment Reporting System, the Customs Agents and all the other systems yeah, long, um, long. have been contracted to Unipass. So they don't think it will work. Yes, that's all. Well. <laughs> we don't know what's too early. Well, let yeah. me tell you about... Government said they would do. Imani said they shouldn't do. Then, of course, but all, all let me tell you about system. our money that yes. is logged up somewhere. Yes. Front page of the BNFT says only 8% of funds recovered from collapsed banks. Mm. That is according to the Bank of Ghana. Now, uh, of... That story is on page three of the more than 16 billion Ghana cities spent on some nine banks to protect depositors' funds after they had their license revoked by the regulator. A little over eight percent has been recovered by the receiver. Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, has said, asked by the BFT at a press conference in Accra to announce the policy rate, how much has been retrieved from the defunct banks? Dr. Addison said, only 1.4 billion Ghana cities has so far been recovered from the collapsed bank's assets, adding that this is unimpressive considering the amount involved. Quote, the receiver has been able to make some recoveries, but they are not as impressive as expected. Hmm. The last time I checked, about 1.4 billion Ghana cities have been recovered, and we are looking at a loan portfolio of over 16 billion Ghana cities of those banks that were resolved. So, out of 16 billion, if we have recovered just 1.4 billion, it tells you that there's a lot of work to be done. We have seen in the papers that the receiver has auctioned cars and other properties of those banks, trying to find more money to meet some of the requirements of paying deposit funds. So, yes, the effort is there. But the progress in terms of the amount of cities that they are recovering is slow. This is serious. We, we really need to talk to the receiver about not just the process of recovering of money from the banks, but even from the, in terms of how many people have been paid, those who are owed monies by the former uh, institutions. So it's a big story that we'll be following up on. Now, let's get into other stories. Yes, Bernard, let me take you to Borga because something we've been calling for is being implemented by the Borga Municipal Assembly. Mm. They have digitized their property rate collection system. Is it? Yes, and the story in the Ghanaian Times says the Borga Municipal Assembly has started a digitized property rate collection process Mm. to hip up revenue generation. This formed part of the 2020 resolution of the Assembly to ensure that special property and businesses in the municipality are captured into the Assembly's new database for proper collection of rates. Mr. Joseph Amujuri, the MCE, in an interview with the Ghana News Agency, noted that the exercise will enable the Assembly to collect adequate information on property and take steps to ensure people pay their bills regularly. He said the new improved system will be used to constantly send reminders and alerts to property owners to update payments of their bills while a tax force would be on guard to enforce the new plans. Well, so Borga is taking the lead. Well, whilst the President is in the... Uh, Upper West region and also the Savannah region, he may he may want to pass through Borga in Upper East yes, to sure. commend them for what they're doing. Because the story for this morning, President Kufado will from today, February the third, embark on a two day working visit to the Savannah and the Northwest regions. The president uh, will begin from Savannah region, pay a critical on the Pembewura, and then inspect rehabilitated works at the Salaga water system at Salaga. He will then inspect works on the Tamale Salaga Mankango Road and the Bunjai Fufusu Road. 
he would then attend a deba of chiefs and people of salaga north and then this would uh, end the first day he would then take his daughter to upper west region where he would pay a court call on the one now followed by a visit to the family of the late alaji Sohanun Mukta, who served as member of the council of state until his passing and then he would then do some visit on a construction of a multi-purpose youth center in wa before going to kaleo to cut the soil for the commencement of a 17 megawatt peak solar plant to be located in kaleo and laura he would then inspect works on the nandom hamile road to climax his visit so a lot of road and infrastructure things on his visit more on the president and this is a religious infrastructure project mm-hmm. president ashanti region christian council raised funds for construction of national cathedral mm. this is the center spirit of the ghanaian times now the story says president and now on saturday joined the Kumasi christian council of churches in ashanti region to raise funds for the construction of the national cathedral mm. in accra where he announced construction would begin on march 6 2020 the occasion was graced by the chairperson of the board of trustees of the ncg most reverend samuel asanti entry and some members of the board the chairman of the christian council and other notable figures addressing the fundraiser president ekufuado commended the congregation and members of the board of trustees for demonstrating their determination and willingness to join the historic coalition which was going to build the national cathedral for ghana all right take you to the daily guide bernard and page six interesting story from nafco Mm -hmm. we don't owe any supplier oh the chief executive officer of the national food and buffer stock company hanan abdul wahab has refuted claims that heads of some senior high schools have threatened to shut down their schools due to the absence of food Mm. the absence of food the reports alleged was due to the fact that some food suppliers have threatened to curtail supply to the schools over non-payment of monies owed them by nafco describing them as erroneous mr wahab debunked such claims that we do not owe any supply. Nadia Mashu Chelpang wins 2020 spelling bee competition. This yeah, is citynewsroom.com. Yeah. The Great Hall of KNUST was the center of attraction on Saturday as a young Nadia Chelpang from Northern Regional Capital Tamale was a judge champion in the 2020 spelling bee competition. Nadia went past more than 150 other contestants who met victorious in the spelling drill. A debutant and a student from Alassan Benzaba Memorial, she is the first person from the Northern Region to emerge top in the contest which has been running for more than a decade she mm-hmm. takes over from 2019 winner kwabna edu Sari as reigning spelling bee champion now aku mishi of university of ghana basic school which is my former school <laughs> please second <laughs> yeah while joel uh, no th- i went to that school you, you university primary yes while joel uh they just write joel joel of victoria grammar school how can you just write joel what's wrong with you <laughs> joel what doesn't he have a surname while joel of victoria grammar school maybe, placed he, maybe he's brazilian they are not serious <laughs> nadia as the champion won for herself a return ticket to washington dc to represent ghana in the 93rd script spelling big contest she also gets a 4000 cd prize money an engraved golden trophy a dscv decoder plus one year subscription Yay! and a thousand ghana city gift voucher for books a certified rec- a certificate of recognition among other prizes and then the other prizes are listed guys it was a really exciting yeah, contest yeah and the way they were pronouncing the names of the words or they pre- pronouncing the yeah. words was really difficult yeah let's run through some stories quickly yeah let me Look give you one mm-hmm. 2500 youth engaged in community mining at Kotopreso mines mm-hmm. uh, and the dc has indicated that this is not like galamse mm. and this is being regulated to ensure the youth get proper jobs to do and also create a good um, um environment for the community now farmers and buyers are fighting over cashew price still and, yes still now this uh story from daniel jirasa in when she says there is mm-hmm. growing there is a growing trade tussle between cashew farmers and buyers over pricing of raw cashew nuts. Now, the farmers claim that the buyers have been shortchanging them for years, and this time they will stand their ground and demand what is due them. And they are asking for 800 Ghana cities uh, f- uh, for a ton of cashew. I think this should be a bag of cashew. And um, the buyers are proposing 700 Ghana cities. And Nana Edu Boampunsim, the 11th, in an interview with the Ghanaian Times, attributed um, what he termed, he termed as perennial price disparity to the lack of regulation in the cashew subsector. Hmm. He said the buyers had cheated farmers for far too long, hence the decision to demand fair price Does this season. The, do cashew farmers need a cocoa bot? Because, see, for example, BNFT page 2, cocoa bot to rehabilitate 37,000, 850,000 hectares of unproductive cocoa farms. It seems as if cocoa farmers have a father called cocoa bot. Who does everything, everything for them? For them yeah. You know, should should cashew farmers demand same? Yeah, maybe that would help because this story says as part of rehabilitation drive to revamp productivity levels, the Ghana Cocoa Board has set a target of cutting down about thirty-seven thousand eight hundred fifty hectares of cocoa farm across the country this year. 
this uh, in these are uh, farms are affected with cocoa swollen shoot virus as well as aged trees the cocoa board will then replant the affected farms with improved seedlings for the owners the farmers will among others be compensated with a thousand cd for each hectare destroyed so maybe we should look at cashew and other cash been crops. Promises okay. upon promises. Because uh, cocoa board is very. Or, or, we should, or we should create a wing of cocoa board called cashew board. No, there is a cashew development board of sorts being set up by the government, yeah, but I maybe. think they should speed up because yeah. cashew, as we all know, is the biggest non-traditional export. It's a, it's, it's employing yeah. hundreds of thousands of people yeah. in the BA and other areas. So and that, that could be the way to go. Let me yeah. give you some very interesting story. Okay. Police reject six thousand five hundred city bribe and arrest suspect. Every time the police do wrong, we talk about it. When they do the right, we don't talk about it. Yeah. Page 3 of the publisher A man is in the grips of the Garu District Police Command For attempting to bribe the police With the amount of 6,500 cities For a theft case to be dropped Against two of his partners According to the reports by the police The first suspect was arrested in Tuesday January 20th in connection with a missing motorbike A search in his room led to the retrieval of three unregistered motorbikes All suspected to have been stolen During interrogation by the police The suspect uh, named somebody as his acc- accomplice his accomplice was subsequently arrested for dishonestly receiving and selling the stolen item. While investigations were still going on, one Kofi Awuni approached the police with an amount of 6,500 CD cash, hey. requesting the police to discontinue the case. Yen Asemasa. But the, the police said, Bede, we will pursue the matter. A press statement from the Upper East Regional Police Command s- indicated that the said amount was being retained as exhibit of evidence. The statement also said the suspects were arraigned before court on Friday, January 31. Tell it, police! Well done. Yeah. Uh, well no. done. Let me also give another one. Police probe six Chinese for torturing worker in Central. The police are working. They do it, police in Kaswa are investigating six Chinese nationals for torturing a worker of theirs at a stone quarry at Ewutu Bosum, Abena, in the Central region. 41 year old Baba Amadou was allegedly handcuffed, hung on a tree, and beaten with wood till he ah. started vomiting and urinating blood. According to the victim, he was instructed to offload stones into a machine, an order given by one of his supervisors. He explained that he was fired that day for supposedly causing one of the stones to hit a supervisor, a development which he strongly denies because he reportedly did not did due diligence before starting the machine. He was called to report at work and tortured on arrival. Mm. So the police is investigating this. And then let uh, me give you this headline from um, Nigeria Okada riders leave Lagos as police enforce ban. So police in Lagos are also There's working. There's been a ban instituted on Okada in Lagos State. Lagos State. Parts of Lagos State. And that's what we said that if you want to impose such a ban, you may want to do it on a regional level yeah. so that it's because these are local issues yeah. finally Ibrahim Mahama saves six year old boy from blindness that story is also on page two of the publisher newspaper there's a lot we have after the news with business stay with us this is the city breakfast show the city's 